Hello everybody, Infernape Shinjo here and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Anime. Don't mind if my mind is kind of wandering right now. I've literally recorded four or five videos and I don't have any fans on, only my ceiling fan because it's hot out and I don't want anything to distract the audio, but whatever. Got more suggestions. Let's jump into them. So continuing the trend of anime from the summer season that I'm discussing, up first is Monster Musume Doctor. And this is actually funny because I heard about this anime and at the same time I knew of the other Monster Musume where the main character, I'm gonna call him Mr. Brick because he's basically a brick, is living with the snake girl Lamia and there's whole there's this whole thing. You, if you know the anime, you know the anime. It's kind of a hentai in a way, but at the same time, I knew that this anime probably wouldn't be as extreme as that one. And to be fair, it kinda isn't. But honestly, there isn't really many thoughts that I can bring up as a start before I get into the pros. So just starting in with the pros, the thing that I like, and I'm not sure if this show is gonna go down the route of giving Dr. Glenn a harem. That certainly seems like what it's gonna be because he's the only human that I've seen. But if they're gonna give him a harem, I like how he's focusing on examining all these creatures that he doesn't even mind like touching the women's chest or whatever. Like he's just doing his job. He doesn't care about like, oh, this is awkward or whatever. I like that because most of the time it's just like I mentioned before, a blank protagonist that's just doing nothing. He just gets into these embarrassing circumstances and he's just like, oops, my bad, this is awkward. But I like how he's just oblivious to it because he's so focused on doing his job. And while I wouldn't say the comedy is top notch in it, I was thrown back when he was working on that cat lady in the first episode and she literally says, help me out. And it's like a pun on me, I don't know. I was just, I was thrown back on how cool that was and how, how off the wall it was. Like when there's a cat on screen or a cat creature or whatever, I expect puns, but that one just came out of left field for me. And the other question, and if anybody has watched this anime, you can probably just answer this for me. Is this just going to be an episodic monster of the week sort of thing? Cause the first episode is about him and this centaur girl with her overcoming her losing all these matches because she doesn't have horseshoes or whatever. I'd be down if it's gonna be a monster of the week sort of thing, but it's gonna get kinda dull at the same time. Unless they find a way to mix it up. And as far as my last pro, I'm not sure if this show is meant to be taken super seriously or if it's supposed to be just like a meme, but like the first episode, that's all that I saw. So that's all I'm going off of. But like this show is kind of dumb and not in a bad way. Cause literally it's just like, okay, centaur girl needs help. And literally the solution to the first episode is basically a pedicure. Like, he lifts up her hoof and just starts scraping. It's literally a pedicure, and you can't tell me that the first episode solution isn't a pedicure. I was just busting out laughing that I was watching this and realized the solution is doing your nails, essentially. They're not nails, but you get my point. Now, the cons that I will give is why is it that Dr. Glenn only works on women. I know the reason why from a business perspective, but like in the show, why is it that he only works on women? Unless they give an answer in a later episode that the only reason he works on women only is because they are more comfortable around him. Unless they give something like that, then it's just kind of like, oh, he only works on women. How coincidental. And the second thing, and this is me being really nitpicky, do they have to make this show overly sexual? Is this show going to be all overly sexualized, or is that just not it? Because, like, the first episode, obviously, he starts, Dr. Glenn has his first patient, and, like, if you watched it, you know what happens. But then later on, he's just, like, cutting the centaur girl's nails, 
and I think she's literally just about to come or whatever. It's just like, what is going on here? And then the snake doesn't really help because she literally just sticks her tail in her mouth and that just makes it even more awkward. But like, if that's all the show, then I'm probably not going to continue it. But I'm not going to criticize anybody that has. How much of this show is just going to be an exposition dump? Because they literally had a scene where Dr. Glenn and Safi are just talking and then just see, and she just says, oh, we went to the same school. I'm your senior or whatever. Like, okay. Explaining, oh, we used to go to school together. But like literally outright saying, here's the exposition. I don't know. I would have preferred a more natural way of them saying, we used to go to school together. Like, if she would have said something like, you act the same way that you do now that you did back in school. But she literally outright said, we went to school together. It's just like, it's just kind of weird. So I think I've spent enough time talking about this anime. So up next is Shadowverse. This one and the previous one were both given to me on stream. And people were saying, oh this anime is good, watch out for the OP. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what to go in for. But I just watched it, and of course being a first episode of an anime, they don't show the OP till like the very end, so I'm not too surprised. But I saw the full OP in the second episode with all the visuals and whatnot, and I can see why people were talking about this. This OP is such a bop! I love it so much! And it helps that it's done by Penguin Research, which they've done a lot of songs that I really like. Like the song Hatena, I really like. Keto, I really like. Honestly, I just like Penguin Research's old vibe and all the instruments that they use. I just like the band in general, so it's so cool to see them do an opening for an anime that I discuss. But I think this goes without saying. I have a notepad up when I'm watching the episodes and I write down things as I think about them. And the first thing that I mentioned is the protagonist is pretty funny. And I say this because he literally goes downstairs asks his grandfather, hey can I have the salt? Here you go. Hey can I have the ketchup? Here you go. Hey can I have a smartphone? And he's just like, he's trying. And the grandfather catches on and says like, nope, no smartphone for you. But then I'm just like, that smartphone joke actually mattered? Because like literally I didn't know anything about Shadowverse. If it's an actual legitimate card game, I don't know anything about it. I'm assuming it's played through smartphone or whatever. But just like, oh, he makes a joke about a smartphone. That's kind of funny. But then minutes later, oh, here's my smartphone. And I was fl flabbergasted that the smartphone joke actually mattered. And there's the phone. Thank you. Come again. The next thing that I like, and it's not really a criticism. Obviously, it's not because it's on the pro side. But there are so many similarities with the original Yu-Gi-Oh that it's just hilarious. It's like, okay, you can just go through the obvious. Main character has two-toned hair, but I think that's just a normal thing with any card game anime. But just like, even down to the specifics of the show, it's just wild how many similarities I found. It's like, okay, you got the main friend of the protagonist. In this case, it's whatever the heck the green hair guy's name is. And then in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's Joey. Joey loses to Taya in an episode. It's actually confirmed. I don't remember when or how, but they just explained Taya beats Joey in a duel. And they literally do the same thing in this episode. The main friend of the protagonist loses to Memory in the first episode. And then even down to specifics of the rival beating one of his friends in the first episode, and they lose something important. In the original Yu-Gi-Oh, Kaiba beats Yugi's grandfather, takes the blue eyes, and in here, the main dude takes a smartphone. Now, I'm not sure if he's actually gonna be the rival or whatever, but just like, the similarities are crazy. Even down to like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zaxel, where Shark beats Bronk and takes his deck or whatever, and then breaks Yuma's pendant. I know at the same time, that's probably the case with a lot of card game anime, but I was surprised with how many specific similarities I could find with this in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it might be just me, I don't know. You'll have to let me know if you watch this yourself, but just something about Memory's design I really like. Which is probably pretty obvious since she's on the thumbnail. But just like, this show itself is pretty good. The few criticisms that I'll get, I have one on my list that I'll get to later, but 
Shadowverse itself, the card game, I know nothing about it. So I was hoping that the first episode would explain, here's how you play Shadowverse. But I'm just here watching it being completely in the dark about it. And I'm at that point in life where I don't have enough time dedicated to specifically learn this game. But to be fair, they didn't really go into details on explaining Yu-Gi-Oh in the first few episodes. But if it's going to be anything like any other card game anime, it's probably going to go on for a while. But like, I know I was super specific with Monster Musume Doctor already, so I might as well go through it here as well. Like, in a real life sense, why would the main character find a phone in a shed and think, Oh, this is my phone now, and just take it and leave? Like, okay, I get it. It's main character syndrome. He's kind of dumb, I'm sure. But like, if you would really find a phone, why would you just take it? That just doesn't make sense to me. But it was a good enough show. I would say the only criticisms really are that I don't know enough about the game to continue watching. That whole thing about the finding the phone in the shed, like why would you take that? That was kind of just for a meme. But like in all seriousness, why would you take a phone that you just find randomly? But at the time that I wrote this list out, I didn't have any other Let's Talk Anime suggestions. So I went back on my catalog to find anything that I could discuss and you know what it is if you've seen the thumbnail. Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. This show is just such a trip. I'm not going to go through like pros and cons because I've watched it and it's been a while since I've watched it anyway. But like, the thing about this show is you got the main girl, which I believe her name is Chiho. Somehow I remember that name, but I can't remember other names. She interacts with... The main dude in black hair, I can't remember his name, I'll call him Artist Man. He writes a manga or whatever, and she wants to help, but they have to keep it a secret or whatever. But like, the gold that comes with the show is just like, how stupid the characters are, in a way to put it. Like, Artist Man is completely oblivious to any of Chiho's affection or whatever. Like, he is literally the embodiment of a shonen protagonist, because he is literally that dense. But the main plus that comes with this show is all the comedy that comes with it. I wouldn't say it's as funny as top tier comedy anime like Asabi Asabase, but it's, it's in the middle there. It's been a while since I've watched this, so I can't really remember specifically the comedy bits that I really like. But just like, I remember watching it and just shaking my head at how dumb and hilarious the show is. But essentially, if you want an anime to watch, this is my suggestion for you. But that is going to be it for today's episode of Let's Talk Anime. I didn't really discuss Monthly Girls as well as I wanted to, but like, I didn't have enough time to go back and rewatch some episodes, and I just wanted to give a broad overview. I think the real goal is that comes with watching the show and experiencing it yourself. But if you have any suggestions for Let's Talk Anime, leave them down in the comment section. I will get to them when I get to them. But until then, moment time.